Uh, reading the beach is one of the most important aspects in surf fishing. It is very important to have a trained eye to know exactly where to cast, how to find the cuts, the troughs, the rib types, and most importantly, the fish. Reading the beach is not rocket science, it's actually quite simple, especially presented from an aerial view. So I put together this quick and simple video to much more easily explain how to read the beach from an aerial view. But before we continue, if you want to be elite everywhere, not only the surf, you want to catch all kinds of fish, you want the best fishing tips that will make you one of the most elite anglers, please click on the subscribe button and hit that bell notification for some of the crispiest fishing videos out here. I would like to start talking about the most underrated area of the beach. This is the wade gut. You see, most beaches with multiple sandbars have an initial trough area right in front of the beach. This is called the wade gut. Wade guts are typically no deeper than 3 feet. This is the prime area to catch bait fish, whiting, slot fish such as reds, puppy drum, and a lot of speckled trout. I guarantee that most of the time that you go surf fishing, you don't even need to get wet if you fish this area. This is one of the best areas to fish with soft plastics for dinner sized fish. I guarantee you that if you fish the wade gut, you can catch big bull reds also. You see, you don't need to cast far most of the time when you're surf fishing. You can just fish this front end right here. You don't need a 13 foot rod most of the time, all right? A nice 7 foot rod with a soft plastic or small baits is guaranteed to catch you anything in the wade gut, okay? Don't worry about having to get a big setup to cast way out into the sandbars. You know, it's real cool. It's, you know, it's a lead AF to cast 375 yards into the ocean, you know, uh, going offshore and stuff. But most of the time, that's unnecessary. What's the gut or the trough, though? The trough or the guts, as many call it, is the area in between the sandbars with no wave action. The best way to identify this is by looking for breaking waves and looking in between those areas. The area in between those areas that do not have breaking waves is a gut. These are prime areas to cast baits into. They are fish highways and this is where a lot of the fish travel throughout the beach. When I'm fishing the guts, I like to cast my baits along the sandbar in the middle of the gut. Many fish such as bull reds and sharks swim in the deepest areas of these troughs. Other fish such as pompano tend to swim and hug sandbars looking for small crustaceans and small bait fish to eat. A lot of fish like these areas since the breaking waves disorient small bait fish and other small baits. The further you get into the beach, the deeper the trough gets. I like to fish the back end bars during a low tide. Gulf Coast beaches have an immediate sandbar. I like to wait to this sandbar and cast into deeper guts. If I'm feeling a little adventurous, I can swim to the second sandbar and cast into deeper areas. But I do not advise this. If you decide to do this, do it at your own risk. Next up we have cuts. Cuts are the next identifiable beach structure that is very important. Cuts are exactly what they sound like, a cut or a gap on the sandbar. Cuts are one of the reasons why we have riptides, you know. Sandbars run parallel to the beach, a cut runs perpendicular to the beach. Cuts run between sandbars and cuts run across a sandbar. A cut can be identified by looking at the breaking waves on the sandbar, but here's how to find it. Here's a video also. Drive down a beach, if you see a breaking wave along the sandbar, but there's a sudden gap with no breaking waves on the breaker, that's a cut. You see, cuts are exceptional areas to fish on the beach. Predatory fish use these cuts to navigate from sandbar to sandbar. They also use this as an ambush point to attack weaker bait fish that are overpowered by the stronger current that is formed by a cut. Cuts are extremely dangerous and this is where the majority of riptides occur. Predatory fish are usually swimming in the back end of the bars by the cut ready to devour any bait fish that is being overpowered. That being said, this is how you fish a cut. If the cut is on the first sandbar which is typically the closest sandbar to the beach, I typically like to fish lures in this area. This is a prime area to catch speckled trout, slot reds, and other big game fish. I don't get in the water, it's too dangerous where there's a cut. I can usually cast into them from shore though. When I'm fishing cut or live bait, I like to cast behind the cut. The current that goes through the cut usually creates a wash off at the back end of a bar. I like to cast my baits in there too. Another great area to fish in a cut. This is a little harder and requires heavier weight is to cast directly into the cut. But like I said, you have to use heavier weight and you have to use a big bait here also. You know, if you have the accuracy, you can cast in there. This is a great area to cast the bait because a lot of the fish that are migrating through the bars are gonna go through that cut and the first thing you're gonna see is a bait. That's a great area to cast. Most of the bigger fish that I've caught, I've either caught, caught them by casting a bait behind a sandbar next to the cut or directly in the cut. This is a great area to cast the bait because a lot of the fish that are 
migrating through the bars are going to go through that cut and the first thing you're going to see is a bait that's a great area to cast most of the bigger fish that i've caught i've either caught caught them by casting a bait behind a sandbar next to the cut or directly in the cut up next we have holes holes are harder to identify and can be confused as a cut along the sandbar most of the time a hole is several feet deeper than a sandbar or a gut as a matter of fact it's deeper than the most of the bottom surrounding areas to the untrained eye a hole can be easily overlooked but once you know what to look for you will always find them here's an example of a hole when there's a hole that stretches through a sandbar you will see a breaking wave break right before a hole and you will see that the wave will no longer break over the hole but the wave will continue to break and spill around the edges of a hole the water will remain flat over the hole then the water will finally start to crest as the hole starts to rise at the lip the main difference between a cut and a hole is the following a cut requires a sandbar whereas a hole does not require a sandbar holes can actually form anywhere along the beach the way I fish holes is pretty simple, just cast right in there, it's just that easy. And one last thing is that these beach structures constantly change. When there's a cut or a hole on the beach one day, it might not be there another day. The beach constantly changes as the wind and currents change. Wind and tides play a major role in the beach structure. Sandbars change as well but are much more stable and do not drastically change day by day. Major storms such as a tropical depression and a hurricane will change the sandbar at a greater rate though. Depending on the type of fishing that I'm doing, I like to cruise the beaches to find an ideal spot with as much structure as possible. This is the reason why few anglers are very successful when they are surf fishing. On your next trip, try to locate as many of these beachfront structures as possible. I guarantee that once you find these beach structures, you will consistently catch and improve your surf fishing odds. Trust me, surf fishing isn't as easy as many people say. One cannot simply cast into the surf and expect a decent fish. That is basically fishing blindfolded. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope this video helps you land your next biggest fish. Like, share this video also, follow me on social media such as Instagram or Facebook, alright? Links will be in the description. That's it. Appreciate it, y'all. I hope it's not a little shark, man. I want a red. <laughs> oh, shark leader. Red! Red! Woohoo!